Hello. So today I wanted to kind of go back to simpler times and show you some ways to take great product photos using just your phone. You can absolutely take great photos using just your phone as long as you get your lighting right. Today we're just gonna use natural light, so something that I'm sure we all have readily available to us. I'm gonna be shooting next to a window and having the window just on the left side of me. If you have any other lights turned on in the room that you're using, make sure you turn them off just so there isn't conflicting color temperatures with the natural light and the mix of indoor lighting. Next, I highly recommend having a bounce card on the opposite side of the window just to bounce light back onto your scene because one side of your scene is gonna be pretty well lit because of the window, but then the other side's gonna be a little bit darker. I'm just using a piece of a white foam core board that I got from the dollar store, but you can also just use a piece of cardboard and wrap a white sheet or a white shirt or even a white plastic bag over it just to bounce some light off. If it's a little too bright and sunny out, you're gonna to wanna to diffuse the light a little bit from your window. So I suggest using a white sheet or a curtain to just soften the light a little bit. You could also use parchment paper and just tape it up on your window. However, if you do wanna embrace the hard light, then I say go for it and play around with those shadows and the hard light because you know I love that. So I encourage you to try it out as well. You can go outside to do it or if there's a cool stream of sunlight coming in from your window, use that. So for the setup, I'm just keeping the props very simple. I'm just using a mix of real plants, which are just plants around my studio, or if you use any plants around your house, and some fake plants, which I just got from Ikea. But really any art store or dollar store will have lots of fun stuff for you to use for props. And another thing that I got from the dollar store are these pencil holders that I'm actually gonna use as pedestals. Since they're wood, you can actually paint them any color that you like. I just didn't do so here, but you can do that if you want. Now for the backdrop, I just got pieces of large construction paper from the dollar store. Pretty much everything I'm using today is from the dollar store, but it really is a great place to source your backdrops or props for cheap. So how I set up a paper backdrop is I start off by taping the back piece to the wall, and then of course just laying the surface piece on the table that you have. So a tip that I have for placing the backdrop on the wall is I like to place the piece of paper slightly below where the table surface is. So that way I can get the surface piece of paper and the back piece of paper to be flush without having a gap from the bottom edges of the paper. And if you're looking to create a seamless backdrop, the setup is very simple. You just tape the top edge of your paper onto the wall and then just have it curved down onto your tabletop. So now let's talk a little bit about using your phone. So my phone is a Samsung S9, so it's about four years old. Honestly, the camera is fine, but I know all the newer phones have much better cameras. Mine actually only still has the one camera, but even if you do have an old phone, you can still get great photos using it. And thanks to the making of this video, I discovered a pro mode on my phone camera that I've never used, but you're able to actually adjust your shutter speed, your ISO and your aperture, which are all things you are doing on your camera that you can do on your phone. There's a couple other settings as well, which I'll show you in a little bit, but this changed my life. Of course, if that's a little too much for you to handle, you can stick to the regular photo mode where you still will be able to adjust the brightness on your screen. But I still encourage you to play around with the settings on the pro mode and just, you know, move the sliders up and down and see the differences that it makes. And obviously you'll be able to see if it's too bright or if it's too dark and you'll be able to adjust accordingly. By using the settings in the pro mode, you can really enhance your photo straight in the camera prior to editing and the rule of thumb for photography at least for me is to try to get it as bright as you can in the camera so you can do less work later I kind of joke and say oh I'll just fix it in post and sure there are obviously a lot of things that you can do in post but when it comes to exposure which is the basics of photography really try to get it right in camera if you can all right and finally we're gonna get to shooting so first one is very straightforward no pun intended. More of a close up straight on angle of your product just to really bring it in focus. And something that you can do is have your props a little bit further back and having your product a little bit closer to the camera just so you can really highlight it and show it in focus. So the next angle is very commonly used and I'm sure you're already using it in your day-to-day -day life, which is the top-down or flat lay angle. So this angle is really great because you'll get 
totally even lighting on your entire product or your entire scene. And you can really get creative with the types of props that you're using and also the different placements of your product and your props. And last but definitely not least of the tips that I have, in fact, this one is my favorite one, is playing with hard light. And as I mentioned earlier, you can do this with sunlight. So you do have to wait for a sunny day, but as we're heading into the warmer seasons, hopefully this becomes more readily available to you. So a couple ways that I would shoot this is to place the product a few different ways. So I'll have it upright, and then that way the shadows will show off the whole silhouette of the product, or I'll lay it down flat, and sometimes the light will hit your product a different way, especially if it's kind of like a see-through material. So if it's plastic, if it's a container, stuff like that. You'll get some cool ref light reflections coming through the material. So I just tried to get creative with the hard light and I brought in a real plant just to create some cool shadows. And I noticed the shape of my window was being casted onto the ground. And I just kind of thought it'd be cool to use this light as kind of like the spray shape. I don't even know what to call it, but like the sh shape of the spray coming out of the bottle. And so I played around with that quite a bit. Um, I even added some flowers to add in a shadow just to make it look like there is something being sprayed out of the bottle. So honestly, just have fun with it and place your product in as many different ways as you can just to see what works because you literally have nothing to lose. So just try it out and have fun with it. So when it comes to editing these photos, I really didn't do much with it. I just actually edited the photos in my InPhone app, which I guess would be like the Samsung photo editor app. And I really didn't do much editing to them, so I did not feel the need to use Photoshop on my phone or Lightroom on my phone. And I figured that might not be accessible to everybody or maybe a little too advanced in general. And so I just wanted to show you that you can edit your photos just using your phone. So the simple adjustments that I did were just the brightness, contrast, highlights and shadows, saturation and color temperature. So something I would keep in mind while editing your product photos is just to be aware to not change the color of your product too much. And this goes for any sort of product photography, whether you're doing it with your phone or your camera. When you're editing, just try to keep the color of your product true to life as much as you can. Of course, you can increase the vibrancy or the saturation a little bit, but if you're adjusting the hue of it, just keep that in mind. You want your product photos to represent the product that your customers are gonna be getting, and so you want to set the proper expectation for what they're gonna get. If you don't want to use your phone app and you want to try something else, a free app that I would suggest is Visco or VSCO. I don't know. You can do essentially all the same things, but if you do want to put a filter on it, which there's nothing wrong with, I know it's kind of taboo when people are like, oh, the slap a filter on it or whatever. Filters are essentially presets and photographers use presets, so don't hate. But anyway, I know that trying out new things can be scary. When it comes to building your new website, you don't have to do it alone or really do much at all. With Zyro, you can build a beautiful professional website from scratch using their free AI tools. They offer tools such as a business name generator, a heat map to help optimize the user experience and page conversions, a logo maker, a content generator, and much more. If you already have a website and you want to import your content from your old website, they've got an AI tool for that as well. Try it now by using my code Aileen Choi or by clicking the link in the description below to get an exclusive discount. Plus, you'll get three months free and a free domain with any yearly plan. Thank you to Zyro for sponsoring this video. All right, so I know that might have been a lot to take in, but I hope that you can take these tips and level up your phone product photography. Let me know if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm trying to stay more on top of replying to comments so you can expect a response between two to 38 business days. I'm just kidding. I'm going to try to be more on top of it than that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. Leave me a comment and make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Thank you again to Zyro for sponsoring this video. If you want to try them out, make sure you use my code Aileen Choi for an exclusive discount or you can click the link in the description below for more information. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.
So today we're... <coughs> <coughs> <coughs>